Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make, make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Loridana Kamaniti. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards, guided meditations, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditational angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Loridana Caminati, about discovering your true self in the here and now. Now, Loridana is an ex trotter. Born and raised in Italy, on completion of her studies in the early 90s, she moved to New York, where she lived and worked for almost 20 years and finally landed in the UK in 2007. She has worked in the corporate industry in various countries for 25 years until 2017, when she quit her managerial job to follow her heart to train in equine facilitated learning, an innovative form of horse assisted therapy, which I can say is absolutely brilliant. To complement her diploma in e e EFL, she also studied counselling and holds a level three certificate in counselling skills. Now, Loridana discovered the transformative power of equine facilitated learning, which is a powerful therapeutic method assisted by horses from the ground only, as she embarked on her own personal healing journey. Now, through this gentle practice with the horses, she overcame many personal challenges and regained a sense of purpose in her life. She has been there and suffered that. So she understands the role of women in society and how, how they can be particularly exposed to some of the elements that cause poor mental and emotional health. For this reason, she feels very close to other women and has the ability to empathise with them at a deep level, offering genuine care, tenderness and acceptance. She is a keen and enthusiastic about supporting other women in their journeys of self-discovery and personal development. And she's doing exactly that by also helping them overcome depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, trauma and so much more. Now, she is the founder and director of a company called Be Herself, which I think is a brilliant play on words, offering horse assisted well-being as well as mindfulness and earthing sessions in her private rural location in the beautiful country of Hertfordshire, 40 miles from London beautiful place to live. Now, when not busy working with clients, you can often find Loridana <coughs> among the herd, just standing quietly among the horses, sharing their presence, the space, and most of all, the present moment, and letting all love, peace, and harmony flow from within. Now, she makes sure to always find time to just be, which is very important, as she believes it is the way for her overall health, well-being. She is also a true advocate of nature's beauty and healing power, and she spends time outdoors every single day to re-energise to the nature, all her senses surrounded by the natural elements, finding in nature the answers to many of her internal questions. So without further delay, hello, Loridana, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, I'm really well, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Ah, oh, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you not only can share this show, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Laurie Darner and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Laurie Darner, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how discovering our true selves in the here and now will help us? Sure. <laughs> Where do I start from? Um, well, my name is Loredana, like you said, and thank you so much for your kind introduction to me. Um, I, like you said, I moved to UK in 2007, which is now some time ago. 
And I moved to UK um, thinking I was only going to be here for a year um, as I was transferred for work. And I'm still here nowadays. <laughs> um, I just absolutely fell in love with this countryside, um, the England countryside, which is spectacular. And um, I still remember very vividly as I moved from, from the States to, to UK, I, I first landed in this in this airport and it was really busy and with this funny accents worse than mine and <laughs> I couldn't understand the word because I was speaking American not English um, people would understand me either for, for a couple of months but in any case I remember so vividly that as I as I arrived in this little town called Tring which is still where I'm living I felt as if I had just arrived home and it was a very, very strange feeling because I never even visited UK before. Um, only later on, I realized that that feeling was coming from, from a part of me that it, it always felt extremely connected to nature because in UK in general and in this area, nature is at its best. I mean, it's, it's fantastic everywhere I look, you know, there are these vast um, fields with cows and sheep and, and horses, of course, and uh, beautiful uh, woodlands, you name it. So I fell in love with that. I, I should say I was able to fall in love with that again. Because the truth is, for the first five years of my life, I lived in a, in a tiny village in, uh, in the country, in south of Italy, where I was born and raised. And I really have the best memories of those years. I was very tiny, I was only you know, up to five years old, but I still so vividly remember everything, all my, my games that I played and the smell of the flowers I was smelling. I remember collecting ladybugs in a shoe box and then letting them all out at once. It was this amazing red carpet in front of me. I was fascinated by that. So I guess where I'm going with this is that I've always felt really, really close to nature and I always felt happy when I was surrounded by nature. If it was animals, if it was just a tree, I, I, I love to, to just be around that. So arriving in the UK, I, um, I rediscovered that passion of mine. I felt really grounded by the nature that was surrounding me. And I felt right at home. And um, to top that up, um, a horse called Angel appeared out of nowhere into my life and really made the biggest difference, I think. Um, a friend of mine, somebody that I had met, of course, I made new friends uh, in, the, in the new country. And um, this girl asked me if I wanted to go in and do some horse riding with her. And so I explained to her that I've never even been near a horse before. I've never ridden, I, I've never been uh, around a horse. Because growing up in Italy, I had plenty of cats. Um, in fact, too many. I used to just bring <laughs> home all sorts of stray cats. At one point we had 14 and my mother was not impressed with it. Yes, but never horses. You know, I was never around horses. And, um, and I've never ridden before. But I, I told this friend, sure, I'll have a go. So. We went together and I, and I had a lesson and um, I had a second lesson and a third one. And after the fourth one, I decided to share a horse because I just felt so much in love with that. It was just great. It was a really fun thing to do. But I knew from the beginning that it wasn't about the riding. That wasn't the experience that was coming home with me after the lesson. Um, it was the connection that I, that I was already starting with, with the horse. Um, and I say the horse because it's not just angel that specific horse to me the horse is is something bigger <laughs> it's what comes with it um so i i started sharing this horse named angel and she was indeed like an angel to me and she took care of me and helped me to learn to ride and took me places and it was just an incredible time to to be able to um enjoy the the countryside uh, on top of a horse, you know how they say that the view from, you know, between those ears is just special and, and it is. And, and she touched my heart in so many ways that I couldn't put them in words. I just couldn't. Now, on top of being uh, just a beautiful experience, um, it was very 
very powerful to me because he taught me and helped me in so many ways especially as I went through some very difficult times in my life, um, one being the loss of my father, because um, I actually witnessed his death in, um, at, at the hospital and it was quite traumatizing to me. And we were so close with my dad. I mean, he's still the most important person in my life, even if he's not physically with me. And um, that loss was so big and so devastating that I really, really didn't know how to how to, to feel any better and um, it was angel he was the horse that helped me through this um uh, i cannot tell you right how she did because it's something that you can only experience there are no words that can actually explain it but i can tell you that at times when i was riding her and i was crying out loud and i think of my dad i could hear her comforting me and she was just a bomb to my soul. She really was. And she only started, let's say, this path because really Angel was, was there at the beginning, but she wasn't the only horse that touched my life. And um, sadly, in the family, I had other um, big challenges, including cancer and um, lots and lots of, of um, depressive, <laughs> to say the least, things that have made me go through a lot. And, and, and that's why today I am so grateful and so happy that I am where I am because I'm now able to not only share with others my, um, my life experience, but having learned from it and having um, surpassed so many challenges, I'm now capable to be that much closer to other women and people in general, really. All my life really have been supporting others you know if it was my sisters um of course which i love dearly and i will still do anytime uh or just friends but i've always been the one to reach out you know and just wanted to do something for for others i consider myself an encourager um because i'm always the one to try to you know show that the positive side of things and just to be optimistic because the importance of having a positive mindset in life it's i find it paramount really to 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 be healthy in many ways so with having um these powerful experiences with the horses i um i knew that it wasn't just about riding them it was about connecting with them and i knew that they, they were so um powerful in helping and supporting people and, and therefore mental health and emotional health and all of those things that are so important to us and that unfortunately we often neglect um that i kept thinking that it was always at the back of my mind and you know i, I my life was going on uh working normally because at this point i decided to stay in this country because i fell in love with it so i was working in in uh, in uk now and um I, I thought i was okay i thought i was happy like everybody else you know just going to do your regular regular jobs your regular routine but i just knew that there was something more out there for me i just i've always known that there was something more out there for me but it's one thing to know it's another to actually take responsibility for your mm -hmm. your own desires and wishes and and dreams and and make them come reality and i got that push through the experience that i had with the horses because um, although I wasn't riding or I wasn't um, seeing Angel anymore because sadly she was sold and moved away so I couldn't really even see her anymore, she always stayed with me. To this day, she's so present in my heart. And, and again, I, I know why she came in my life. You know, I, I know um, that my journey has started way before I knew this. <laughs> you know, I can only... I can only uh, think of when it started manifesting itself to me, but I don't know where the journey starts. I mean, if, really now that I talk to you, I'm thinking that my real first job, and that's my real first job in my life, I was 16 years old and it was with horses. And I'm just remembering this and I'm smiling because I actually forgot about it. I was visiting my relatives in the States because um, I was still living in, in Italy as I was still young and studying. And, but we had relatives in, in the States. And um, 
one summer, I was only 16 years old and I went to visit uh, my favorite relatives. Um, and I was staying with them. So it's my uncle Nino, my aunt Rose, and my two favorite cousins, Stefania and Carmine, which I miss them dearly. I haven't seen them in ages, but I have the best memories of that summer. And on, on that summer, I met a friend of theirs who actually owned a horse, uh, a race horse, and she was also working in this barn where they had race horses. And they offered me a job to be uh, the walker of these horses after they would uh, exercise them. So I still remember getting up at five in the morning, <laughs> walk, and I know it just had, of course, at 60 years old, I had so much energy, but it was that lovely intention that I had that kept all that energy up. You know, I so wanted to be there. And I'll go there at 5.30 in the morning and walk for five hours with this big, strong racehorse. And, and here I was, you know, just not even having handled a horse before then, but th that love was already there. I didn't know this, but the love was already there. So my real first job was with, with horses. And, and I think that my real last job will be with horses, for sure. Because, in fact, it was all these thoughts um, that I had about how horses are so powerful and so um, helpful to people that made me think there's got to be something out there. And, you know, there's got to be something else. Um, and I just thought, well, I need to do some researches and try to find a way to combine my passion for life and my passion for these beautiful animals and and see if, what comes out of it and so i did and um i found uh, this um this organization that trained for this specific um this specific thing and um the rest is history really <laughs> i just um i never looked back i quit my job I, I was in trading i was a manager of a shop i quit it because i knew that i had to close the door to open another one. I had to make space for uh, new, bigger things. And, and this is what I did and I never looked back. I mean, my life is so much better now. Like, I, I'm truly, truly, um, I, I think I'm truly myself. And, you know, uh, the importance of being yourself, it's, I can't think of something that is more important than be yourself because everything else comes with it. You know, like we are always, um, we're so worried about other people, about our role in society, um, about judgment um, coming from other people, you know, but the truth is sometimes we don't fit the role that others are giving us. You know, sometimes we want something different for ourselves and as difficult as it is to actually say that, accept that and make it a reality, it is important that we do that because it is our life. We're not supposed to be living somebody else's life. You know, we, this, is, this is for us to own and we have to make the best of our lives. And that includes being who we want to be. Now, yeah. I, through my work, I meet so many women who just are even afraid to look deep inside themselves to find out what, what is that they want because they're afraid that they're not going to be accepted uh, for what they want to be or um, they're afraid it's too big of, of, uh, of a challenge to, to face and um, they get overwhelmed, they don't know how to tackle things. Um, or they don't want to disappoint others because we want to be liked. This is what people are like. You know, you, we as humans, we, we constantly search for the approval of others and we do feel judged by others and we do worry. I mean, we come with so many preconditions <laughs> that uh, sadly it's, it's really, and as I get older, I recognize so much of that in myself, in myself really and in my clients, of course, uh, but everything rings a bell because, um, for example, in my case, you know, growing up in Italy, typical Italian um, family, you know, Catholic, uh, uh, certain things absolutely 
important more than anything else. And a lot of those values, I really believe in them and they're great values to have. But then there are others that I really find unhealthy, you know, like this constant concern about people's judgment and that kind of thing. And it's um, if, if only I can let one other woman understand that it's her life, you know, it's nobody else, but it's her life. And if she can take charge of her life and be a happier and healthier person, then that my job is done. <laughs> and um, I feel so grateful that I have this opportunity because I'm so privileged to do what I love to do in working with, with horses. And in the process, I'm helping others and myself which is like amazing. I mean, how lucky am I? Because every day, every hour that I spend out there with the horses and with the clients, I'm benefiting from it. I'm actually benefiting from it. Now, I, I, I can tell you more about the actual work if you want to hear a little bit more about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how do you have you have you with the horses? Yeah, because a lot of people are um, mainly aware of the riding therapy that is offered through horses, you know, um, in UK in particular, you know, the Riding for the Disabled Association, which is a wonderful association, um, and they provide riding for disabled kids. Now, that itself is a wonderful thing. And of course, as we, we can appreciate the tridimensional movement of the horse can help those kids that have physical disabilities. But there is so much more that a horse can, can do. And it doesn't have to be from they're back and and this is where the um equine facilitated learning comes in that's also known as um a, a equine guided learning or assisted learning it depends in which country you are <laughs> it's named differently but it's the same thing it's horse assisted therapy practically and the difference with this kind of um, method is that it's an experiential one so what do i mean by that i mean that what you will get to learn, so this horse assisted learning, this learning is not just explained and taught, but it's something that clients experience. So it's something that it can actually stay with you because you get to feel it on your skin. You know, it, it, it goes inside of you, it just, you can't explain it. That's the beauty of it because it's something that you experience. Now, why does it work and how does it work? You may wonder. Um, well, horses for starting, they're prey animals. So this means that they rely on their instinct to determine what's around them, to know that they can be safe next to a person, another animal, whatever it is around them. Um, they, need to, they need to know that it's safe for them. So because of that, they are so clever in, in reading the energy of what surrounds them instantly and so accurately so by us interacting with them by us just being near them we have the opportunity through them to see how we actually put ourselves out there so the horse mirrors us the horse will actually react to my actions so if somebody goes in a field with my horses and their energy that day is crazy out there because they had the, the worst day ever, you know, they're super stressed. Maybe they're even angry or frustrated and just like, oh, they just don't want to even talk. So they know that coming and being near the horses is the best thing to do because when you do feel that way, the horses will make you feel better. So they're doing the right thing to be there, but their energy, the way it is, is going to be felt by the horses. So the horses will react to that. And they will give this person an instant and honest feedback right there on the spot, right at the moment. Now, the fact that it's a horse that gives you such a feedback, it makes it a lot more acceptable because, you know, sometimes a friend may tell us, oh, that was... You know, yeah, it was a little bit, that was a bit nasty or whatever. And we may get a little bit defensive, you know, because it's another person telling us or, but when it comes to a horse, 
that we know he has no agenda. He has no agenda to tell you that you're one way or another. He doesn't judge, he doesn't care. You know, even if you are bad energy, you're never gonna be judged by a horse. All he's gonna do is walk away from you. So you know what to expect from a horse only as a, a positive um, and honest feedback. So you appreciate it and accept it differently. So you have the chance to learn just by being around them. You have the chance to learn about the way you interact with others and how that affects the rest of the world, which could be your co-workers or your, your, your loved ones or your friends, all of that. Because you actually get to see how your body language comes out because we may not be aware of certain things. So by interacting with horses, um, I can teach my clients those social skills sometimes, you know, that um, we think we, we have it all, but sometimes we don't really. And um, we, we, you know, we can learn about some of our weaknesses, but also our strength. Because when you think about it, we're dealing with horses, which are large animals. Um, they're majestic and beautiful, but at the same time, they can also be a bit intimidating with, with their size. Well, especially my two horses, because they're really big horses, but they're so gentle that nobody can be intimidated by them once they see them and, and, and deal with them. But anyway, what I was saying is that just the, um, the look that the horses have suggests something inside of a person. So, from the moment that you arrive and that you are around the horses, things happen. Now, each session is always led by my clients. And what I mean by that is that things happen during a session. Um, yes, of course, I will guide the session based on what um, uh, the individual wants to work on. Um, I have different programs that I can offer, and um, I, I can tell you a little bit more about that in a minute as well. But the point is, each session is led by the client, which means they're free to say as much as they want. They're free not to say anything if they don't want. Um, the good thing about being with the horses, which differentiates a little bit this type of work with a typical, um, perhaps, counseling session in an office, is exactly that. You know, like you don't need, um, you don't need to verbalize it all. Um, being with the horses you will be able to just be in a space where you're allowed to reflect, self-reflect, get things out. And if you want to talk to me about it, I'm there to, to, to listen to you. I'm there to provide the support that is needed, but only when you're ready. So that means that sometimes a client arrives and they just want to spend the time reflecting, brushing a horse, and just be there in the minute because it is in that moment that they actually get the answers that they're looking for. And it is my job to understand that and to respect that and to actually invite them to do so. Because the one thing that I also think it's very, very important, and it all comes down to this discovering your true self. Yeah, it's about exactly that. To do that, it is important that you, you stay quiet for a minute. It is in the stillness of the moment that you, you can start hearing things, you know, uh, feeling things and, and you can pay attention because when you are so busy mentally um, and, and you're all over the place, nothing can come to you because you just don't have the attention for it. You don't have the mental space for it really. So this is why it's so important that we take the time to just to just be, because it is in that specific moment that you can learn so much from that silence. I personally can tell you that the best and probably the most important lessons that my horses have taught me is exactly that, to just to be in the moment. And it, 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 it just, have, to me, I mean, I'm so lucky again because... I do this for a living, so like I, it's it's just like I'm so I'm so lucky. That's all what I can say. But they really um, show to me what it means to be in the moment. You know, like sometimes you just hear people say, "Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta be present. You gotta be congruent, present." But do you really know what those words mean? Can you really feel them? 
I couldn't before. I couldn't. I wanted so badly to be present, but I wasn't. Um, and that's why it took me so many years to realize what I realized at the end, <laughs> because I wasn't actually, I wasn't standing still. I wasn't giving the chance to myself to uh, look deep inside of me. And like a lot of people out there, I had reasons not to. You know, again, it can be very frightening. It takes a lot of courage to look deep inside of us. Women are like what we see. Again, we may be so big that we prefer not to look. You know, we want to just cover. There is an Italian expression we said to cover your eyes with prosciutto slices when you don't want to see something. <laughs> it's so much easier to do that. But the truth is, if you live a life that is not your life, it's not an authentic life. So how happy can you be? How happy can you be? And you can pretend to be happy, but if you're not really happy, you will know. And what happens is that when you're not truthful to yourself, you're going to start to develop other, let's call them symptoms. <laughs> They're really red flags um, because beneath any feeling, there is a need. So if we're constantly frustrated, if we're constantly mad or sad or anxious or depressed, there is a need behind all of that. We're not just waking up one morning and decide, oh, it's so much fun to be depressed. Let's just be depressed today. Nobody wants that. We all want to actually feel good. Um, but if we don't look deep inside to know what makes us feel good, it's never going to happen. So it is extremely important that we take the time to understand what we want, to understand what is important to us, what is that makes us happy. And it comes down to self-care. Like we really need to care for ourselves and have the same respect and tolerance that we offer to other people, to our friends, to our families. We own that to ourselves because we are going to be better people and we're going to be supporting others in such a uh, better way as well when, when we are in that state. But we need to be able to stay quietly and present for real in the moment to be able to discover what we're about. So one thing goes with the other, I'm afraid. <laughs> we, can't, we can't separate them. No, that's, that's so when you're... Um, working with the horses what sort of programs do you work with uh, clients and and the horses yes so i um, there are three programs that are the most popular one let's say um of course i tailored um each program specifically to, to the needs of the client um and often um the sessions actually may turn out to be completely different than what was planned originally because again I let the client um, let the session, but also I trust my intuition a lot. And I, I know by now what, what I need to do and how I need to change um, based on what I'm feeling in the moment. Um, but the programs that I, I can offer, um, uh, well, there are some for adults and also one for children. Um, so the one for children is uh, a boosting program, which helps, um, helps them really to, um, build or boost their confidence um, because as you can imagine dealing with with horses you know and we can do all sorts of exercises that it will definitely gonna make them feel quite confident um especially being you know <laughs> children like that and my horses are like that so um building their confidence um learning to regulate their emotions um uh, all the things that pretty much they can um they could learn and and use in their in their uh, everyday lives, you know, with their with the other kids at school. So all the social skills, you know, learning to work in a team or taking responsibility, all sorts of things. So that's for children. And then for adults, I have a, a mindful um, program just uh, for women, specifically for women to reconnect uh, to themselves and. Uh, rebalance their lives and um, there is a, a strong focus on uh, self-care and um, you know self-compassion and self-love and um, 
I also do, uh, I'll say, fun activities um, in this program because um, it's about expressing ourselves as women. And um, one of the things that I particularly enjoy because I've discovered it myself, and, I, and it wasn't too long ago, actually, I discovered it last year through this COVID uh, situation and lockdown situation. I uh, wanted to learn something new, and, um, and so I did. And it's uh, playing the Native American flute. And um, I now have incorporated that as intuitive uh, playing uh, with the clients, which is lovely, especially when the horses join in. Uh, so we do drumming and, um, and the Native, uh, uh, Native American flute. And um, you gotta see Milo coming and, and, and using his muzzle to go in the drums. It's actually so beautiful to see. So yeah, there are um, different things. You know, it's, it's not a typical program. But it, again, this is all about uh, allowing people to express themselves from within. So, you know, when you play the music, um, you may not even have hold the instrument before ever in your life in your hand. But because it's coming from your heart, it doesn't matter. There are no wrong notes. You just play it how it comes out. And the experience of doing that in the field close to the trees, close to the horses, it's it, the whole thing, is a, it's, it's really just connecting again with everything around you. Um, then I have another program, which is um, uh, kind of um, very helpful for people that live a very active life, you know, and kind of stressful life. Um, so I, I think I called it actually uh, how to deal with stress, you know, by nurturing the self, because it's exactly that. Like in order to um, avoid that, and then they learn techniques of how to keep the stress at bay as well. But we spend the time um, just being, you know, just like the horses do, spend the time to be uh, just just, just being in, in, an, in an environment where you're usually not, you know, just being able to, leave everything else outside of it for a moment for a for an hour two hours or whatever it is but just learning how to cope with what life can throw at you in terms of stress so that you can be a healthier person and then um the probably the most popular one which is the um you know the self-discovering one where um, and empowering for women um where we work specifically to go deep inside understand a little bit more about ourselves understand um what those wishes are and the true potentials and then find the motivation and and the strength within yourself to go for it so that kind of empowerment to do it yeah so all sorts of things but i always come up with new things that that's the I just uh, I love to experiment, I say, and I always tell my clients um, that, but I think they appreciate it. Like, um, what else can I share with you? Oh, yes, maybe about my um, so-called wild horse garden. <sighs> so, yeah, I, um, I called it the wild horse garden because it's good for the wildlife as well as for the horses. So I've actually planted and seeded all these flowers and plants that are good for them to have. And then I teach my clients about the medicinal properties of each one of those plants, because there is always a constant learning environment. And then they get to pick some and we get to offer to the horses and they will see which one they, they will prefer based on what they need, because they're really good in choosing what's good for them, the horses. So we can learn from that as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots and lots of, uh, of fun things. And, and I think that's why I, I really enjoy my job as well, because it, it's never a, a dull moment. You know, it's, I mean, there are horses around, there are birds. I mean, I have my, my um, friends out here all the time. There's a barn owl and a kite, which are practically always flying on, 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 on us as we have our sessions. Um, we just we're just surrounded by beauty really I'm, I'm so fortunate that i can share these beautiful things with uh, with my clients and and again enjoy it myself in the first place no no it's a lot more than that yeah, it's a lot more than that. 
Yeah, that's why sometimes people ask me, uh, wow, after like 25 years in the corporate industry, like, why did you, why did you decide to go for days? And I always said to them, what I, and I mean days, I, I didn't decide days. I, it was a me deciding days. I was chosen. <laughs> I was actually chosen by the horses to do it. This is my call. And um, I actually would like to share with you how, be, just because you mentioned about the, the name of my company, Be Herself. Um, so I feel that it's only fair that I share with you how I came up with this, because the truth is, this, this, this name, this word, came to me way before my business came to life, which makes it even more incredible. Um, this is many years ago. So the, my company was formed in 2019, but this that, that I'm about to tell you happened years before then. I was on a train ride um, going up north uh, to, to England. And as I looked on the left side, I, I still so vividly see this scene, it's unbelievable. So as I looked on the left side, um, there was a massive, massive um, field. It was probably 40 or 50 acres, absolutely huge. And in it, there was a herd of probably a couple of hundred horses, at least. And I promise you, I, I don't even know how to how to make any sense of it, but my thoughts were so strong in my head that they actually became almost like a reality invisible, as if somebody had spelled these words out for me. And I saw written down among this herd the words be herself. And I didn't know what was going on, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not sleepy, I'm right awake, what's going on? All right, these thoughts came to my mind, and of course, I'm actually, I'm not seeing it, because it's impossible, how can I see the words in there? You know, like, I'm having all this conversation in my head, but the truth is, those words came to my head, and they stayed with me for years. And this is why I'm saying to you, this was my journey, and it was there for me before I knew it. And, that was the message to me to be myself to find my true self through the horses and that's exactly what has happened because the horses have helped me so much um to overcome so much and i know i know that i i probably could have not done it without their help when it did happen so i'm ever so grateful and the the only thing that i can do now i feel is to just help others to experience this this magical healing um through the horses and encouraging them again giving them the the knowledge about how simple it can be you know sometimes people think even even with mindfulness you know you you think you gotta take the time out of your uh, your routine to do things and it may be a bit challenging or you gotta get used to it and the truth is, if we if we decide that we we want to be mindful about something, we can just do it as we do our everyday stuff. I mean, you can do it as, as you're washing the dishes if you want. I mean, as simple as that, you really can. And once you start with the little things, you're gonna start being a little bit more aware of how you feel, how your body feels about things, and how you feel within yourself. And when you do that you have the opportunity to really then understand a lot more about yourself again what is that you really like what would you like if you could choose would you like to be somewhere else in life would you like to fit another role and if so who's stopping you if not just yourself so finding the courage to be yourself and if i may add the one thing that i always always tell my clients is that you know, it's it's really important to let go of certain things. You know, we all store lots of trauma, lots of negative things, and that is actually gonna make us sick physically as well as mentally and, and, and emotionally. But it's there is time to let go of things and it's important that we do so. But there is also there should also be the time to let things in. What do I mean by that? 
if something is, is a struggle, if something is actually not okay, let's not disregard it. Let's not park it aside. Let's not avoid it. You know, it is very important that we accept it, that we accept everything as it comes our way because everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose in our lives. And if we accept it and we try to understand it and work through that, as we do that, whatever it is, it's going to lose its, its, its power and it's going to no longer have a purpose. And that's when it's going to go. But we need to take the time to let things in, not just let go. I think that's the one thing that I, 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 I think it's, it's usually overlooked, but it's extremely important. Perfect. Okay. So, so I do so, so, cards, readings, and guide meditations. So each week, I like to ask my guests what they would like. So, um, Loredina, would you like me to do an angel card for angel of card for you and those watching, or would you like me to do a guided meditation? I, I think definitely a card, also because I know one of my best friends. She will be watching, and she. She has a special love for angels, so um, that's for her as well. She knows who she is. Perfect. Uh, thank you. As always, when we get the cards, I do them for what you need to know for your present. So, although I work with the past, when we work with the past, we heal it so we can be fully present. And when we go work with the future, the future is so we can contact the future, know what we need to do to bring it back to the present. So. Well, just Laurie Dina and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good. What does Laurie Dina and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? Lovely. So we have got begin now. Take your first step. <laughs> okay. How perfect is that? Um, it, it 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 is it, you know although you've been you know working with the with the horses for a while now you are kind of like taking those steps now to really um go out there and share what you're doing with more and more people um you know and, and doing this show is kind of like that that first step of going okay i'm here come and see me and what what me and my horses can do for you you're so right it was spot on beautiful absolutely beautiful and again it's for everyone watching as well you know yeah now is the time to take those steps you know take that one step because when you take that one step that brings other things into you which then takes you on to the next step so yeah, if, uh, um, if, if you're watching this, take that first step with what you really want to do, what you really want to bring into, in, into, the, into the present and just watch it grow, um, really. So, yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful card and both for you and for everyone watching. So, Laurie Donna, do you have any thoughts or insights to leave our viewers? Um, I'm sure I've talked a lot already because <laughs> that's what I do, but actually, yes, I think, um, if I can just say as a last thought, um, whoever is listening to this, don't, don't live your life in fear. Don't let your fears guide your life. Um, try to have your hopes and your, and your dreams. The, the, the light um, to guide you through life. Um, remember that, you know, your thoughts, your feelings have, have an importance as well. And what we think we put out there and we have a, a, a power to attract things into our lives. So I say, make those things positive things, dream big, um, Understand your passions, be yourself, become your passion, fulfill your life because you only have one and it's only yours. So live your life and be happy and healthy. Thank you so much for that.
Thank so, you. everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Laurie Dana has given you will help you further on your journey. Now, Laurie Dana, if um, Laurie Dana, Laurie Dana, <laughs> okay. um, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Yes, um, a good starting point will be to go to my website, which is www.behorself.com and actually sorry dot co dot uk um and um you can send me an email which is info at be yourself dot co dot uk also if you want to um to meet the the horses and see what we're up to you can follow us on our facebook uh, um, business page be yourself uh horse assisted well-being and of course if you look it up with my name loredana community you can easily find me and um yeah so Look forward to um, to hearing from some of you. Perfect. Um, I'll put the link in the comments so that um, it's easy for people just to click on it and go straight to those. So um, I'll, I'll do that. So, of course, if um, you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need some help finding your destiny, your life purpose and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20, 30 minute video call to find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey and take charge of your destiny. And of course, I do have the Angel Wings membership community if you want to um, grow your wings and soar with uh, archangels, ascended masters, gods, goddesses, oracle cards, and of course the other people in the community. Um, so do check that out. And of course, if you sign up to my free weekly newsletter um, on my website, you get a uh, free um, guided meditation to help you de-stress, plus a couple of other little gifts on there. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube and you feel that you want to, please do subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when the show goes live, but also when I put guided meditations and other um, visual guided future lives on the uh, YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Loredana, for that. It's been absolutely thank you. brilliant. Um, and do check and um, do check out because I've I've worked to, um, not with uh, Laurie Dana's horses, but with with um, with uh, Michelle Budd's horses, and I've actually even danced. You know, this is how amazing it is when you connect with the horses. I danced with the horse, so I look forward to seeing you at the same time, same place next week um, when you join me on this show. So thank you all very much, and I will see you then. And again, thank you, Laurie Dana. Thank you for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.